Thank you very much, Lukas, for the introduction. And thank you very much, first of all, for hosting me here in Prague. And I'm happy to be here to talk about the report that we've written. Um, it was a report written for Greenpeace Germany for the risk of Vattenfall's German lignite mining business. And we were examining the legal, the technical, and the, as well as the economic aspects. And I, will I brought some slides with me, but I will mostly try to get you through them as fast as possible so that we have enough time afterwards for any kind of questions that you're having. And first of all, I would like to point out that what we kind of did was a report based also on the fact that the Swedish government decided to sell Vattenfall. So all parties in charge, but also the people in the opposition actually decided in favor for getting rid of the lignite business and transforming their energy business more into the direction of renewable energies. And we at DRW Berlin um, our German Economic Research Institute, a think tank. And we have done a lot of studies in the past related to the energy vendor, but also in particular to Lignite, which can be also downloaded if you're more interested in the exact details. In general, there's one reason why we are facing the problem at the moment, and this is global warming. And a lot of studies have pointed out that if we want to achieve two degrees centigrade um, warming maximum, we are not allowed to burn all the resources that we have found until now. Studies therefore point out that actually 70 to 90% of the coal reserves that we know of have to remain in the ground. This basically means that the moment that climate regulation, that laws by the government come into practice, all these assets are not worth anything anymore. That even if a company has a mine, they will not be allowed to burn the coal. And this is something which I think many of you have also heard yesterday when there was a decision here in Czech Republic um, about the mines, um, that this is a topic that will become even of more importance in the future. It's like this carbon bubble that will burst at some point. There was one illusion five years ago, maybe 10 years ago it started already, which was called CCS, Carbon Capture and Storage. And the idea was that I can have a coal power plant without emissions. Jens Walde was one of the power plants where Vattenfall tried to show that this is possible and they failed. In 2011, Vattenfall decided to get rid of this plan of the CCS illusion. So there will be no power plants with coal without CO2 emissions. So if we st stick to CO2 targets, we also have to get rid of the coal power plants. The decision against CCS was not only a decision by Vattenfall, if you look at the development of CCS projects in Europe, you can see here that there were a lot of projects which were supposed to come online and which were cancelled all over Europe. In Germany, as well as in Poland, there is no CCS project that will actually take place. Therefore, one of the other reasons, because we wanted to examine the economic effects of Vattenfall and Lignite business in general is that the price at the moment in Germany but also in Poland is here the black bar is around half of the amount of the ex external costs of health costs etc that are connected to Lignite business. Therefore burning coal only creates negative revenue for society. And the moment that a government starts to make a company also pay for these externalities leads to the fact that burning coal is also economically negative for a company. So therefore, the main message is there is a global trend to phase out coal power plants, not only in Germany, but in general in the Western world. And this is economically also efficient. And this is the reason why Sweden and why Vattenfall wants to get rid of the lignite business at the moment and why they have problems finding a buyer. If you look at Vattenfall's structure at the moment, you can see here that 
the Swedish business in Sweden itself is based on nuclear and hydropower. The rest of the portfolio is mostly lignite business in Germany. And the problem connected to it can be seen here because emissions in Germany are around 70 million tons and there's a climate target by Vattenfall itself which is 65 million until 2020. So the CO2 emissions in Germany by Vattenfall are much higher than the target itself and they still have emissions in other countries. So this is why they have to get rid of some shares um, because they have targets which they want to stick to. So this is the reason why the lignite operations are not consistent with the sustainability, with the environmental goals of Sweden, of Vattenfall, as well as with the Western world. In Germany, we have a lot of goals, and I don't want to go through all of these figures because it's really complicated. But what I want to point out is that in Germany, we have this reduction target for CO2 emissions, which we want to stick to. And this is in 2050, 80 to 95% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. We have a lot of emissions in the agricultural sector and in the households, which we cannot reduce so much. This is why the electricity sector until 2050 has to be 100% decarbonized. So no more emissions in 2050 from electricity sector. In addition, lignite power plants are not flexible enough to be a partner for renewable energies. So for the medium term, we will need gas power plants to go along renewables until in the end, we only need renewables. Um, we kind of ran a lot of modeling experiences because some people always say you need coal power plants for the system. And our models point out that it's simply not true anymore. At the moment, we have 30% of electricity by renewables in Germany on average. There are days when there's much more electricity in the grid by renewables. And there's no problem of stability or whatsoever. Something that is even more interesting is here a scenario where on the left side you see if there's no wind, not much is happening. If you have a lot of wind, you can see that the red dots mean that a power plant has to be shut down because there's too much electricity. The red dots on the right side, it's the Vattenfall lignite power plants. So if there's a lot of wind, even if it would make sense economically to run the power plant, they have to be closed because renewable power plants are the first ones who are allowed to sell electricity. And this is only today when we have 30% renewables. We have targets where we will have 50, 60, and in the end, 100% renewables. So lignite power plants will be shut down more often. We have these climate targets which will lead to more and more CO2 emissions, as I said. And this is the reason why the German government intervened in the last years to close even more power plants. There are targets for 2020, but also for 2025, 2035, and 2050. And the environmental minister in Germany stated that she could imagine a coal phase out until 2040. So this is kind of, we haven't decided for a year, but 2040 was a date that the an official environmental minister mentioned this year, which would be reasonable. 2040 for coal mines, hard coal, as well as lignites. At the moment, there's a proposal being discussed by the German government. It will force 2.7 gigawatts of capacity to be closed down. They will be put in a reserve for four years and then they are shut down. Of these 2.7 gigawatt, nearly one gigawatt will be of Jens Walde or probably it's not clear which block yet, but Vattenfall will have to shut down one gigawatt. It is not that they wanted to do it, but the government was very clear and very strict. Either you do it, or we will force something even worse on you. 
This will only be the first step because this is to reach climate targets 2020. But I showed you that there will be targets afterwards which are even more strict. There are a lot of reforms that are being discussed in Germany which could be added in addition to the ETS trading re reform. So there is a European ETS, but in Germany we are aware that we will need additional national measures. The things that are discussed are a minimum CO2 floor price, minimum efficiency levels, flexibility requirements, a coal phase-out law, emission performance standards, or maybe a capacity instrument like it is introduced now, just moving certain capacity amounts into reserves. In the end, this will kind of lead to the fact that a renewable-based energy system, which is in accordance with the Energiewende, has no space for lignite industry in Germany. And this is one of the main drivers why there are a lot of risks for buying Vattenfall in Lusatia, because it's not a safe business. There are a lot of aspects that we've written down in the study that you can have afterwards to read through them more precisely. But in Lusatia, there are a lot of mines which are affected by Vattenfall, and there are people that are moved, that they're expropriated at the moment. And this is the reason why this leads to a lot of uh, problems with the people that don't want to move away freely. And this, in addition, leads to also many re risks for the company. Another risk from the economic side is that the price of electricity is on a downfall. You can see the price, the Felix future prices for selling electricity from 2010 until 2015 here. In 2010, you could sell electricity at 60 euro per megawatt hour. And there are still some contracts from these times. If you start a contract nowadays, you will get not even half of it. It's less than 30 euro, and the futures for 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, they don't look better. So it's very clear that we have overcapacities in the German market. The coal prices are too low, the CO2 price is too low, so you cannot make any more money with it. At the same time, you have a lot of technical and environmental risks connected to the lignite business and also to the renaturation afterwards. In Germany, there exist very strict rules what you have to do after you're finished with the mine. So the renaturation to get rid of the iron ochre, to kind of be sure that it's safe to, if you're kind of introducing a lake afterwards, it has to be safe at the side so that people actually can go bathing. And this brings a lot of technical risks as well as environmental risks. In addition, there are a lot of legal risks at the moment. There is, due to the expropriation of people, some decisions that will go on for the next decades, which is a risk for the new company that might have to deal with it. These, co these decisions, they go until the Supreme Court, and the people, as well as the NGOs, are willing to fight this decision until the end. And the Supreme Court in their last decision stated that they want to strengthen the rights of the people. Because in former times, it was still okay to move people because of energy needs. But in 2015, when we have so much renewable energy already, there is no need to move people because of a lignite mine below them. This is the reason why from our report you can see that in Lusatia buying the Vattenfall business actually goes along with a lot of <coughs> risks that are very difficult to evaluate if you don't know the people and if you haven't been there like we have. And therefore, coming to a conclusion, from our point of view, the only consistent strategy for Vattenfall or maybe also for a potential new buyer might be to get rid of the old plants, to close them down, to talk with the unions, to talk with the people affected, 
to find alternative jobs, to reinvest, to reinvest like other companies have done. E.ON has just decided to split up their portfolio and actually concentrate on renewable energies. E.ON also sold their Lignite business. RWE is tackling the same problem, is close to bankruptcy because they have focused too much on Lignite business. So therefore, a new buyer has to get rid of the Lignite business as fast as possible and has to diversify his technology mix towards renewable energies. And this is the only reason where we see a positive potential for a company, but also for the affected people, the workers, as well as the people that might be reallocated otherwise. So this is the first outlook from my point of view, and I'm happy to answer your questions afterwards.